What's up, everybody? We are back. Episode 3, KVN Show. I'm your host, Kyle Van Noy, a.k.a. Keith now, since Mike Flores or Mike Florio wants to call me Keith. Call me Keith. Why not? But here we go. I'm Kyle Van Noy, if you didn't know. Loose the football, scooped up by Van Noy. Great injury, but Van Noy on the other side makes a play this time. Lofts one and Beckham's loose. Pressure's coming. Tannehill is sacked. Kyle Van Noy breaks out of a tackle, takes it down the sideline. He stays in bounds. He stays on his feet. Date at Seattle coming up, and this is a pick by Kyle Van Noy. And Van Noy is in for the touchdown. Today I'll be talking about the Christmas Day game on Monday night against the Niners, where we got to play the Grinch. I'll also break down a couple highlights in the game. And then we're gonna go to week 17 already, week 17. We're gonna hit some college football, little quick thoughts. Then we're gonna jump over to some news, random shit that we talk about, whatever. And then our flowers part. We gotta give our flowers over the weekend or on Christmas day. Who gets the flowers? We are gonna find out, but let's get into it. The big game. Ravens versus Niners, what a game. But did we give the blueprint? Did we give the blueprint for the rest of the NFL? I think we did. I think everybody's gonna write their notes down. I think D coordinators, people around the league are gonna see what we just did to the Niners. And I think it's the blueprint. Just like what Nick Bosa talked about the Eagles, we just gave it to the rest of the NFL. Right back at you, my guy. And we also, let's talk about the turning point in this game. I want to go right into it because it was awesome. Come out of the half, three and out by the defense. Ty Wallace, 23 yard return. Flag at the end of that, 15 yards. Scramble play, Lamar Jackson, Gus, down the sideline till about the 10 or eight yard line, maybe even five, who knows, who cares? Because the next play, dart on a scramble. To Nelly, touchdown. Okay, next sequence. First play of the next series. Brock Purdy throws a pick to Patrick Queen. Patrick Tr Queen tries to get loose, but he gets stopped. Maybe fumbled the ball, who knows? Never know, don't care. Cause next play, unbalanced, Lamar Jackson, touchdown. I mean, that's like seven seconds and the, the game's entirely flipped into our favor. To me, that is the turning point in this game. All right, now let's get into the good, the bad, and the great in this game. The good, the offense. Have to give the shout out to the offense. They did so good. MVP, Lamar, Action Jackson did a tremendous job running the offense, taking what the defense was giving him. And I think that was very key in this game because that defense is very, very good, and they do a good job of tackling and getting after the quarterback. I think our O-line, they limited Nick Bosa very well in this game, as well as Chase Young. You didn't hear much about them in that pass for us. I know they got a little bit of pressure at times, but for the majority of the game, they did a really, really good job of connect, containing the front and they did a good job in D. Shout out to the O-line. And then the receivers, just likely uh, our tight end stepping in for Mark Andrews being hurt, did a really, really good job. The stiff arm comes to mind in the game. Just a phenomenal job of the offensive receivers when it comes to plas like plaster situation for a defense and scramble drill on the offensive side. Our scramble drill for the offense, it might be the best. No, it is the best in the NFL. They work at it at practice and it does a really really good job and it shows up every game kudos to the offense they were the good in this game let's talk about the bad in the game Kyle Hamilton getting injured re-injuring his knee uh-oh not good we shall see it didn't seem like it was too fearful of being long term he may have just retweaked his already MCL that he had or whatever he had in his knee uh, bummer to lose him, especially in a high-powered game, but he already gave us two picks in the game and some other plays, so shout out to you, Kyle Hamilton, still hooping. Best safety in the league already? Ooh-wee, I don't know yet. Uh, maybe, we, you guys an argument, he's balling right now. Also, the bad in this game was the defensive explosives. Going against the defense, I felt like there was a couple passes that could have been taken away due to tackling or just 
a couple missed cues that were better than that. And then a couple runs too. Explosive runs that McCaffrey had that we should have been knocked out. Uh, should have been low yardage plays, but they got us a couple times. And so that was the bad in that game to me is Kyle Hamilton's injury and the explosive plays by the Niners offense. The great in this game, the Ravens defense. 60 minutes, high power defense, a great game called by Mike McDonald. And then not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Yeah, five, five turnovers. It was like Oprah out there. You get an interception. You get an interception. You get one, you get one, you get two. That's how it went for Brock Purdy. And that's because of the Ravens defense. We came to play and we made a statement. I mean, all the talk was about the Niners offense and Brock Purdy and MVP this, MVP that. And we came out ready to play. Mike Florio or Mike Flores, according to LJ, just kind of was disrespectful and I feel LJ in this. I mean, it was very disrespectful, but it doesn't matter because we are not worried about those people. We are worried about what's inside our locker room and that defense took it personal and we took it personal that we didn't get talked about at all in this game, but we were the last laugh in this game. We were glad we got to play the Grinch and we stole Christmas from the Niners and we packed our gifts on our shoulder and we walked out of there with a dub. Let's highlight just a couple plays, go into detail on them. Let's talk about the referee play, the safety. It was the right call, which sucks. Uh, it's unfortunate it happened. The ref got in the way. Lamar tripped over him. Safety. I mean, what a shitty way to start a game, giving up two points on the offensive side of the ball and their offense gets the ball back. Not good, but I will respect this ref as long as I'm in the NFL because he had the balls to come up to everybody, including the defense and apologize to us. That's never happened to me in the NFL as long as I've been in for the last 10 years as a referee coming up to a group of men talking about my bad guys, my bad. And the first thought was violence for me. I wanted violence, but then compassion hit. I felt bad for the ref. We were also winning, so I believe that helped too. I just wanted to say, you know, that was awesome for the ref to like come up and really own up to that mistake that's never happened. And I feel like that was pretty respectable of him. And next highlight play, I just wanna talk about the sequence. Let's talk about Patrick Queen's pick because this was a hot topic on the bus because we believe that Patrick Queen's Madden rating needs to drop down a little bit in some categories. We're talking about speed. He had the sideline to beat Trent Williams and he didn't. I think, did he get scared of Trent Williams? I don't know. He decided to cut back into where all the defenders of the, the Niners were and it just happened to be a bunch of them. And then he ran a couple over kind of, he got some blocking, broke some tackles, actually looked good in that department. So we gotta, we gotta bump up his ball carrying skills a little bit, his agility, speed goes down, and then ball security. You could have made an argument that he fumbled. So we gotta drop that rating down too a little bit. All in all though, PQ kind of looked all right, being a little, you know, running back. I know he was a running back. Him and Roquan talk about it all the day. I don't know because if a real running back had that ball, he would have hit the high, high step on the sideline around Trent Williams for a touchdown. Didn't happen, but we ended up scoring. Shout out to you, PQ, getting busy a little bit. Next, I want to highlight the play after that, the unbalanced for the touchdown. So this was a great play call. And another, you know, little tidbit that happened was during the week, I kind of stand behind the offense, you know, try to see what they got cooking, what our guy Todd, Todd has cooking during the offensive period session for the red area. And this play I knew was gonna be a touchdown. I liked it, nope, I loved it during practice. And then our guy Snoop on the sideline, I kind of stand next to him. He was telling me the play call. And he said, this one's gonna be a touchdown. And I knew exactly what play it was gonna be. This play is awesome design. It's unbalanced into the boundary. Ronnie Stanley goes to the right tackle. And then Isaiah, uh, Isaiah Likely is in between the 
Ronnie Stanley, the left tackle, and the right tackle, I believe was Morgan Moses. He's hidden right there. But what LJ does is they go fast to the line, set hike, they fake and pump the screen. The whole Niners defense is very aggressive. They go for it. And then Zay Flowers wide open for the touchdown. And then he hit the elite Selly. He kicked the door down. He got the gifts. He threw them on his back and we was out. What a play. What a play designed by Todd. Shout out to Todd and Lamar executing it at a high level. All right, now we're going to change subjects to my player point of view of week 16 of games around the league and we'll preview into week 17. Here we go. We had the Saints and the Rams on the Thursday night game. I know it seems a long time ago, but I believe this game was going to be huge for the Saints and Rams because it had playoff contentions in it. And boy, did Matthew Stafford show up. Puka Nakua is that guy right now. He is him. He went to my alma mater, Brigham Young. Shout out to them. And he had a ball in this game. He had elite catches. Matthew Stafford had some no lookers. He also had a sidewinder. He's the one that started it, not Patrick Mahomes. Let's get that straight now. He started it. Now it should be called the Stafford, not the Mahomes, but Mahomes does it really well too, but Stafford started it, so he deserves the credit. Anyways, Kudos to the Rams, they won. They're in the playoffs as of right now. Let's go to the next game. There were so many good ones. Bengals versus the Steelers. This game, I thought was gonna be close, but it was a blowout. Mason Rudolph shines for the Steelers. He actually got the nod for week 17 because he played so well, because Pickens is healthy. Is there a little QB battle brewing in Pittsburgh? I don't know, but Mason Rudolph balled. He deserved the nod. He's got the hot hand right now, and we shall see them in the last week in week 18. Browns versus Texans. Amari Cooper have a day. Joe, Joe. Joe Flacco coming out of nowhere. And Joe Flacco is doing what Joe Flacco does best. No lookers, Amari Cooper is down there somewhere and he's gonna catch it and boy did he have catches. He had about 11 for 250 plus and two tugs. Amari Cooper was him on Sunday. It was elite watching. I mean, I, I know divisional rivalries, but you just gotta love greatness when it happens. And Amari Cooper had greatness and did wonders against that Texans defense. All right, let's preview week 17, Lions versus the Cowboys. A dome team versus a dome team. Uh-oh, trouble in a dome? I don't know. Cowboys undefeated at home. They take on the Roaring Lions coming off an AFC North win. 30 years, it's been 30 years, good for the Lions. And, but are they trying to go for that number one seed? Are they trying to tie the Niners now? It's gonna get a little dicey at the end. We got the Niners, we got the Cowboys, we got the Eagles and the San Francisco, Santa Clara. And that's awesome. I think it's good for football that it's coming down to the wire on who's gonna get it, but are the Cowboys gonna beat the Lions? I think the Cowboys are going to beat the Lions because at home they play really, really well. They're, they've also lost the last two. Their back's against the wall right now. They gotta win, and they gotta win now. I think they beat the Lions. I think the Lions might be a little hungover after their dub. We shall see, I got the Cowboys. Raiders versus Colts. A lot of playoff contentions in this one battling the Raiders are. They're battling. They're coming off a dub versus the Chiefs on the road. Can they get another road win against the Colts? I don't know. Shane Steichen has them boys with them Colts, Indianapolis Colts playing good football. Can he get them to play more because they had a down game last game? Can they get them going again? Can we get Jonathan Taylor going? We shall see. I actually got the Colts at home. I think they're ready. They want, they want it. And I think the Raiders don't have enough offensively right now. Saints versus Bucks, another playoff contention game. I love it. Coming down to the wire. Who's gonna win? Saints, Derek Carr, can we get it going? Saints defense has been needing help for so many years. They've been so good. Can they get the job done against Baker Mayfield? Baker Mayfield, can he get? an extension because he's playing some ball right now. Mike Evans also on a contract year. Can he get another bag? And he's a Hall of Famer. Shout out 2014 class. 
has a thousand yards every season. Doesn't matter who's his quarterback. He has about 13 touchdowns this year. He is balling right now and he deserves the bag. And I believe the Bucks are gonna win this game and they're gonna claim their stake in the AFC South Championship. Let's go. Here we go. Next one, Packers versus Vikings. Another playoff contention game. Both these teams seven and eight lingering they're lingering but they want to fight they want to keep fighting i mean you got just the packers defense ah you got the vikings offense they're just ah we don't know what you're gonna get it's like a box of chocolates either they could score a lot of points or lay an egg or the defense give up a lot of points just don't know no consistency by either team but the vikings defense is consistent is jordan love being more consistent I believe so. This is why I'm going to take the Packers, but no, I heard Jaron Hall might be the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. I'm gonna switch my pick to the Minnesota Vikings because another Brigham Young alum is gonna be balling at QB. I got the Vikings in this matchup on a Sunday night game. Lastly, we gotta go to our game, the Ravens versus the Dolphins for the AFC number one seed for the AFC North for us. This is gonna be a hell of a game. 1 p.m., Baltimore, Maryland is where you wanna be because you got a hell of a matchup. Dolphins versus Ravens. Both teams playing really good. Dolphins, Tua getting the ball out fast. Tyreek playing injured. Waddle, is he gonna play? High ankle sprain, we shall see. Their O-line a little banged up. Who's gonna be in, who's gonna be out? Moster, is he hurt? A-chain, don't know. Ravens, we got players hurt. Who's gonna play for us? Are we a little bit more healthy? We're rolling, we just came off a dub on the West Coast. Can we travel back and get our minds right for this game? I'm always gonna take our team. I'm always gonna take the Ravens. I believe we clinch the number one seed and we win the AFC North hat and t-shirt game for us. Can't wait, hopefully it happens. But the Dolphins are ain't, ain't no slap team. They come ready to play. That defense is cooking and they're just playing really, really good football. Mike Mc, McDaniel, almost said McDonald. Mike McDaniel is coaching really, really good down in Miami. All right, next segment, we got college football. I picked a couple bowl games that interested me. I went with two games that are big. We have the Ole Miss versus Penn State. I believe this matchup is evenly matched. They really are. They're teams that are on the cusp of playoff contention. They're like, they can smell being in that playoff series, but they're not quite there. They can't find it yet. Quarterback wise, hasn't been elite. Defense wise, hasn't been elite against the good teams. But this is a really good matchup. I'm going with Ole Miss, because I believe they have the better quarterback. They have the better coach. He puts a little more wrinkles in his offense. And then I'm gonna go with the Ole Miss defense. Ole Miss defense. Turn, turn it up, Rebels, let's go. Missouri versus Ohio State is the last game out of the bowl games that I picked, the Cotton Bowl. You could argue Ohio State could have been in the college football series. They could have been, should have been, would have, could have, should have. Don't matter because they ain't. They're playing Missouri and this is going to be a dog fight. I think they match up very well. I think Ryan Day is going to take this team and be physical in this game. He's pissed off of how everything went. That one loss to Michigan, he's pissed. I think he's gonna have his team ready to go against Missouri and beat the Tigers. Alabama versus Michigan. Dave Portnoy, Taylor Lewan's Big Blue versus Marlon Humphrey, Hightower, Roll Tide, Alabama Crimson Tide. What a game this is gonna be. I believe in the Alabama Crimson Tide. I just feel like Michigan is scared. You could, it goes back to when they were in the meeting room and Alabama was n announced as the number four slot. You didn't see very many happy faces in there because it's gonna be a dog fight. And I believe Nick Saban has enough time to get these boys ready to play. Oof, Jalen Milroy is gonna be running that rock. I think they're gonna have their hands full with the big blue. I got Alabama Crimson Tide. The other playoff game, Texas versus Washington. Sark versus his old team where he was a head coach up in Seattle, Washington. This is personal.
Marie, this is for the big one. This one's for the national championship. Can he get his guys ready? Can Penix show the haters that didn't vote for him for the Heisman? Can he have his redemption moment and tell all you haters that didn't vote for him in his moment in the playoffs to prove people wrong maybe but I got Texas in this one I believe I just believe in Sark he's got them boys ready they're cooking a lot of times you know Sark when he has extra time can come up with some play calls that you like just like he did against Alabama he liked those play calls they were cooking against Alabama I think they're gonna cook against Washington's defense I don't think they have a chance in this one. I got Texas. Okay, random news in the random spot in my show. Let's start with Deontay Wilder just absolutely getting bamboozled by Joseph Parker. I, he just got bamboozled in a unanimous decision. Joseph Parker won. I mean, he was just, ah, ah, ah. He was all over the place on Deontay Wilder. He had no shot in this one. Shout out to you, Joseph Parker. You had a good day in the ring. Next, on the docket, we have Christmas basketball. Did it take an L against the NFL again? I believe so. I also saw that the NFL was thinking about playing a Wednesday game. I believe it will happen. Just like we didn't think during COVID a Wednesday game was going to happen. It did. I believe we'll play on Christmas next year, which will be a Wednesday. I don't like it though, but whatever. But shout out to the Celtics. They was hooping, they was balling. Tatum, my guy, shout out to you being a good dad to your little son, Deuce. Love to see it. Shout out all the good dads out there. Lastly, I wanna talk about the Rashard Mendenhall tweet where he tweeted some BS. And you know what? Will Compton and the rest of America has brought us together for the better. They've brought us together for the better. They have, because now, are you on the all blacks team or are you on the all whites team? Now we have a non-white and non-black team. I fit in everywhere because I'm white, black, and poly. I'm a trifecta. I can be on any team I want, baby, let's go. And you know I'm picking the winning team. So all blacks, we up next. <laughs> My favorite part of the show is here, the flowers. Let me get my flowers, hold on. I'll get them. Flowers flowers we got the flowers Ooh, these smell delicious oh, favorite part of the show we got the flowers here we go who's getting our flowers this week first off have to give a shout out to Santa love Santa we had a great week of Santa in my house Monday night we got a dub kids got gifts got to spend time with the family before the game got to see him after it was love was so exciting shout out to Santa I hope he had a great time across the country seeing you guys he deserves our flowers for the week next we're gonna go to Amari Cooper he had 11 catches for 265 yards two tugs have a day you deserve the flowers Amari Cooper flowers for you the next flowers are going out to the Lions 30 years it's been 30 years since they've won AFC North title good for you guys shout out to my favorite security guy elton moore you've been there through hell and back you deserve the flowers are the rest of the lions organization and dan campbell and decker who've been there through the worst of the times good for you man that is awesome flowers for you guys lastly this person definitely deserves flowers. He's the Walter Payton Man of the Year for the Ravens. He's the one is why I'm wearing this badass Versace robe. I would never wear this, but I'm wearing it because it was a gift. Shout out to my guy, Roquan Smith. He was hooping on Monday night, Christmas day, excuse me, Christmas night. He was hooping. Bro, you deserve these flowers. Thank you, that is the end of the show. Appreciate it. Look at that, it's got my name on the back. A little bedazzled. KV, we're rocking. Flowers for everyone. See you next time, KVN Show. That's a wrap, peace and love.